The entire world is talking about what happened at this door. This door right here of a home in Kansas City, Missouri. It's a door where a teenager, a young black teenager by the name of Ralph Yarl decided to knock. He either knocked or rang the doorbell, depending on which news story you read today. Now, there are some details about this that people are totally screwing up, but let's get into what actually happened. And then, should there be charges in this case? Let me know what you think with your reaction. First, the basic details, because everybody's screwing this up. It was about 10 p.m. on Thursday when Ralph Yarl, a junior at Staley High School in the Northland, intended to go to the house of a friend of his brother's on 115th Terrace. He instead rang the doorbell of a home on 115th Street. You see that? He was trying to go to 115th Terrace, but instead he went to 115th Street. And you cannot overestimate just how close these places are. This right here is how close. You'll see right here is where he ended up on 115th Street, and where he wanted to go was over here, 115th Terrace. Very easy to confuse the two, as you can see. Back to the details. The homeowner allegedly saw, saw Yarl and shot him in the head. Relatives said when Yarl fell to the ground, the man allegedly shot him again. The teen got up and raced from the property, but he had to ask three different homes before someone helped him, family members said. The homeowner is a white man in his 80s, they say. We don't know much about him. Another piece of confusing detail some of the stories, like this one from the Kansas City Defender, have a detail about a glass door. The white man reportedly shot Ralph in the head through the glass door. But when we look at the house in this cached post from Google Images, I certainly don't see a glass door here. Unless we just can't see it because it's mixing in, or maybe uh, it's on the back side of the house. I'm not sure, but that, that detail seems a little bit confusing to me. All right, so let's go over to the here and now. We know that this was a white guy in his 80s that was behind uh, pulling the trigger here. But what were some of the details? Well, they had a Sunday press conference about this whole thing because of the protests and people getting upset. Here's what the details were from that press conference. On April 13th, just before 10 o'clock p.m., officers were called to a residence where a teen was shot in front of the residence by a homeowner. The teen was transported to a local hospital for his injuries. The homeowner was taken into custody and placed on a 24-hour investigative hold. Detectives and crime scene personnel immediately responded, processed the scene, and recovered the firearm. After consulting with the Clay County Prosecutor's Office, the homeowner was released pending further investigation due to the need to obtain a formal statement from the victim. All right, that's an important part right there. He was released after a 24-hour hold due to the need to get a statement from the victim. The teenager's still alive. They want to get his side of the story. What happened there? They already talked to this 80-year-old man, and he's told them his version of things. He said he was defending himself, I'm sure, and the police are waiting to hear what the other side of this story is. Now, that leads me to believe that what a lot of people are saying is not true. I don't think there is a security video of this event. Otherwise, the statement from the victim wouldn't be as important. However, they were a little cagey when asked whether or not there was footage of this. As for whether or not this was about race, is racism involved? That being said, does this appear racially motivated in any way? Uh, the information that we have now, it does not say that, that it's racially motivated. That's still an active investigation. But as a chief of police, I do recognize the racial components of this case. I do recognize and understand um, the community's concern and um, the community's response to this particular incident. All right, so we don't have any information to say that race was involved in this, but because the community has uh, uh, erupted and there's protests and stuff going on, we're gonna handle this with kid gloves and we understand you, we hear you. That's the messaging you get from a lot of cops at these kind of press conferences. We understand you, we're listening, we hear you. Well, the teenager who was shot miraculously this Ralph Yarl has been released from the hospital. It's insane to me. He was shot twice, once in the head. They wouldn't confirm how many total times, but it's believed to be two. And he has already been released from the hospital, which is just an astounding thing to learn. What about the actual law? The law in the state of Missouri is this. And this is really, I have to warn you, very just word vomit, okay? It's a little bit legalese. 
A person may, sub subject to the provisions of subsection 2 of this section, use physical force upon another person when and to the extent he or she reasonably believes such force to be necessary to, to defend himself or herself or a third person from what he or she reasonably be believes to be the use or imminent use of unlawful force by such another person. Without all the word vomit, what that means is you must reasonably believe that deadly force or physical force is necessary in the situation. If somebody just knocked on your door, you can't simply shoot them. If somebody just rang the doorbell, you can't open fire on them. However, if there's some reason that you have to believe that you're in physical danger, you can indeed defend yourself. That's the law of the land. But this is far from over. You see, the prosecutor says, we're working to speed up the process, our review of the case. We're trying to speed this up. In fact, here's the full document from the prosecuting attorney. It says, our office has received a substantial amount of public feedback regarding the juvenile who was shot on the evening of Thursday, April 13th. We want to assure the public that our office understands the public interest in this case and is working as expeditiously as possible to address the matter. At, the, at this point, we have not yet received a criminal referral from the Kansas City Police Department regarding this case. However, we are actively working with law enforcement in an attempt to speed up that process so we can review the file when it's submitted and determine whether criminal charges are appropriate. So this is not done with, this is not the end, just because a whole bunch of celebrities have shown light on this and posted about it on social media and all the regular activists have gotten involved in this and they're saying that, you know, this is an injustice, it does not mean we've reached the end of the line. There still could be charges for the 80-year-old man who was at this house. Something tells me, though, that there's more. There's more to the story because we only have two avenues to go down right now. One of those avenues is that this teenage black boy by the name of Ralph Yarl just ends up at the wrong house and rings a doorbell or knocks on the door. Crazy racist 80 year old white man just shoots him, shoots him twice and kills him. That's one avenue you can go down. The second avenue is that there's something more complex going on here. And maybe this interaction was more than we're hearing. Maybe not. But right now, we are operating without a full view of what is happening in this case. And the crazy thing is, we do this all the time. We don't have a full view of the details or all the different uh, things that happened that led to this shooting, but everybody's already reacting as if they know the whole and full truth. What do you think happened here? Do you think that this man should be charged? Let me know. Give me your reactions in your comments below. Thanks for watching. As always, please hit the follow button. You'll get videos like this each week. I haven't done one in a little while, but I'm back in action now. So make sure you follow the page on Facebook or YouTube.com slash the news junkie.